here early in the second quarter. The first points the Sooners have given up in the second quarter this year. There's Duell Brewer, 23, and Michael Thompson, 45, looking to receive it. And the wind blows the ball off the tee. The wind is swirling here today. It uh, at times has been anywhere from 10 up to maybe 25 miles an hour as you look at the state flag of Texas. When it gets down along the playing field there it can change directions and swirl around quite strongly. Line drive kick taken by an up back for Oklahoma. Larry Bush. And a flag is thrown on the tackle made at about the 27th. Now Reggie Barnes is going to the locker room. The call is an illegal block against Oklahoma. Reggie Barnes going in early and I mean early there are 12 and a half minutes left in the second quarter. They need him in their defense. He's a tremendous player and a great inspiration. We had a pushing in the back here. A 10 yard penalty on the kickoff. That moves the ball back to the 15. And again, the story so far in the second quarter has been Texas controlling the field position portion of the game. The Sooners starting deep in their own territory, first and 10. Rashid and Brewer in the backfield, and it's Duel Brewer. And he gains about four. Let's go down to the sideline and Dean Blevins. Guys, Reggie Barnes, the outstanding All-America candidate for Oklahoma at linebacker, out with a uh, hyper-extended knee. They do not know the extent of it. They're taking him in. We'll know shortly on that. They don't believe it's ligament damage. Kale Gundy and the quarterbacks now choose their balls. They used to play with this Wilson 1000. Gundy said, no, I want to play with an R5. They got him an R5. Kickers didn't like it, but the kickers can learn to, to kick whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can notice that that R5 is a little more elongated, easier to throw, and tougher to kick. Second and five. Gundy completing to P.J. Mills. First down at the 30. Covered immediately by Lance Gunn. And Mills is shaken up. They put two receivers outside the uh, tight end in a one-back offense. Comes back and throws a short hook in there uh, for a first down. They give you a cushion in there. That's what you want to do. You can just keep throwing out there all day. It looked like he got bent a little bit awkwardly. Here, here's the pass. He catches the ball, gets hit from the behind, and then uh, this hit right here as he fell over him, I think it was unintentional, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I think he uh, hurt himself on that play. Winfred Tubbs coming in, and when you get that speed and that size moving, it's hard to stop. And it did look like Mills might be getting away from Lance Gunn. And well, he got away from Gunn. It looked like he was going to get something, then he stumbled and went down and the fella uh, fell over. P.J. Mills, a freshman at 6'1", 185, and Winfred Tubbs, 6'5", and 240. So we'll be back as they attend to P.J. Mills in just a minute. You own some Zat core, right? Think I should sell it? I got out weeks ago, right after my broker's firm downgraded the stock. Now don't tell me that your broker's still hot on it. Who knows? I use a discount. A discounter? What do you think? Is it just because you know how to make money, you know how to invest it? Well, I just thought that, you know... I've got a terrific guy over at Payne Weber. Call him. Come on, how's some broker gonna know what's right for me? Go ask. Hitachi? Wait, I know, I know. They make... Look, your favorite show. <gasps> oh. Hitachi makes big screen TVs and 20,000 other entertaining products. Hitachi. Hitachi. Oh, wait, that's my phone. I'll connect you now. Bonjour, here are the drawings. Looks good from here. Hello. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Take care. Au revoir. Hitachi makes digital communication systems and 20,000 other amazing products. Hitachi. In the beginning, there was only one vehicle of its kind. 
Today, it's the only one to combine a lease this powerful with one this secure, this comfortable, and this affordable. The extraordinary Chevy S Blazer lease plan from the extraordinary vehicle that originated the species, Chevy Blazer. Monday night from the nation's capital, two of the best quarterbacks in the NFL will go head to head. John Elway leading those Denver Broncos four and one into RFK Stadium to take on Mark Rippon and the defending Super Bowl champion Redskins. Nine o'clock Eastern time, eight central this week on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. And there is P.J. Mills who apparently suffered a leg injury when he was bent a little bit after making the catch. He did walk off, although limping under his own power. So Oklahoma has a first and 10. The ball at their own 30. They trail by three during the second quarter. Kenyon Rashid getting about four out to the 34 in the grasp of Anthony Curl, number 42, and number 95, Dominic Bustamante. When you're a running team, if you ran a play like that and got four yards, you'd be uh, highly satisfied. As a passing team, <laughs> that's just the average play. <laughs> Yeah, you got to run, though. Now they got three wide receivers to the left. Gundy is five of seven passing for 99 yards, and he's throwing here. Quickly on a slant in and completing it. Number 86, Ricky Brady, or 89, rather, Juwan Penny, the wide receiver. Oklahoma has used this formation um, quite a bit. Here's the inside receiver, Penny, as he goes down. See the, the tremendous cushion that he has. Uh, from the uh, strong safety gun. And um, Cundy just comes up and throws that ball and gets it in there. Jawan Penny, a freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 5'10, 195. It's another sooner first down at the 49. Luol Brewer banging for about three across midfield to the Texas 48. Anthony Curl again and Dominic Bustamante on the stop. Here's what's happening in the Big Eight today. Nebraska all over Oklahoma State in the fourth quarter. Kansas, what a team they've turned out to be. They're playing very well. And Colorado, just a six-point lead at halftime. And in the Southwest Conference, NC State beat Texas Tech. Rice won over SMU. And tonight, it's Baylor and TCU just across the way in Fort Worth. Second down, seven. Another quick one off the hands of Corey Warren. Warren had about a step on 21 Grady Cadness, and Warren wants to know where the flag is. They're putting those uh, two receivers outside the tight end. The inside receiver, whoever's on him, you can read it. Here's the play. This is man coverage, and Cadness is on him. Ah, that's that might be real close. I don't know whether that's pass interference or not, but wasn't called, so it wasn't. Well, but, those defensive backs are good at getting that hand on them. But that, that inside receiver, if they play zone, they hit it in front of them. If they play man, they try to hit that quick post or slam. Now, Gandhi didn't like what he saw immediately when he came up to the line of scrimmage. It's third and seven. And he quickly asked for a timeout. That stops the clock with just under 10 minutes left to play in the second quarter. Texas leading by three, and so far, Bo, you've made it a point of talking about it, what a good job Texas has done with their play calling. They have the lead. They have moved the ball. They were not necessarily expected to do so against this Oklahoma defense. I guess John Makovic deserves a great deal of credit so well, far. Well, I, I think against the uh, Oklahoma defense, which is strong, they're, they're changing up the formations and then uh, trying to make them guess what. Throw some, run a little, Draw a draw, uh, stick a draw in there, hit a screen. Uh, John's doing a great job of mixing him up, and that's how he's keeping that offense going. Oklahoma here now has uh, either they line up in two tight ends uh, with a uh, eye back formation and do some running, or they put two receivers outside the tight end and uh, 
And Gundy comes up there and reads whether it's man or zone. If it's zone, he's going to hit a quick pass or a short hook to the inside receiver. If it's man, they're going to go for the business with some sort of a quick uh, mini post or a quick slant. And uh, that's good strategy. And then every once in a while, he gives that ball to that big fullback with uh, the two receivers out on one side to the tight end side. So um, it's good strategy, and uh, both coaches, I think, have got a good game plan uh, to move the football. So far, it has worked fairly well. And earlier, I may have said that Colorado game was at halftime. That game was played Thursday night. Gundy running away. First down inside the 35. Dan Malone, the safety man, and Anthony Curl finally got him. But Gundy saw an opening and took it. That was a crossing pattern. Uh, they had a uh, broken formation with two receivers on each side. And then they crossed these receivers, and uh, nobody was open. And uh, he was starting to get a little pressure. He stepped up in there. In, in both cases, these quarterbacks have been able to move around and make something out of nothing. Gundy that time gained 13 first and 10 at the Texas 35 and Rashid going nowhere and again outstanding penetration by Todd Hunt who's a senior out of Richardson Texas at 280 pounder it's not the first time big Todd has been in the backfield oh, he, he's made some play the um, the Oklahoma offensive line, of course, they have that uh, great, big, huge uh, freshman center uh, that I never thought you could ever play in a freshman in the offensive line, <laughs> but he's in there playing, playing pretty well. Second down and 10. Gundy has time. it away Lance Gunn brings it in but he's well out of bounds when he made the reception and he makes it with one hand but it's an incompleted pass and it'll be third and ten here's the offensive line uh, you can see a little they got uh, poor old Hall beat up in there and holding on to him and doing a good job but uh, sooner or later that uh, umpire will take it upon himself to say I don't want you guys doing that anymore and he's going to throw a yellow flag. 71 in red is Jeff Russler the young man who has only one hand and he is doing a great job along the offensive front. He's the right guard usually. Third and ten. Gundy firing over the middle. Incomplete. It was intended for Tink Collins and looked like it might have been a catchable ball. Van Malone again had the coverage. This was a uh, too deep uh, zone defense. They tried to hit it right in between the zones there. You can see the crossing there, and he just threw it high. But had he thrown it a little lower, there's always that possibility that the ball's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage. But uh, he overthrew it, and so now they got a uh, fourth down situation. And they've decided to try a field goal. Scott Blanton has come on. Riddell, the punter, will be the holder. It will be a 52-yard attempt. Good. I tell you what, that's wow. the way to do it. <laughs> Run on the field at the last minute so you don't have to think about it. Scott Blanton bangs home a 52-yarder to tie the game again at 10. Here's that play again from the end zone. He kicks that ball, and I want you to know that had five to ten yards to spare. He hit it good and knocked it through there. Watch Scott Blanton. Yes, sir, that is a career high for Scott Blanton. Officially, they took a yard away from him. They're calling it a 51-yarder. I don't think he cares. Chevrolet announces just about the last thing you'd expect from a car company. Lower prices. Believe it or not, this is for real. Chevrolet is lowering the price of every new 1993 Cavalier Coupe, Sedan, Wagon, and Z24 Coupe. No gimmicks or hassles. Just straight talk. 
and lower prices. Surprise? You shouldn't be.